Hello, YouTube. Uh, this is the first episode, the inaugural episode uh, of Aberdeen Apiary. Uh, this is um, a new adventure for me, uh, both on YouTube and with beekeeping. I've only been doing the beekeeping for a short time, and, and YouTube is brand new to me. So uh, I hope the editing isn't too wonky. I hope this is somewhat entertaining, uh, and I hope you all enjoy it. So we're going to dive right in. Um, I'm going to start by telling you a little about, a little about myself. Uh, I've been beekeeping for the last four years. Up until this year, I've only ever had one hive. Uh, and this year I have eight. So it's been a big jump um, from you know something that's just a, a, an idle hobby. Uh, it's something that's taken up a, a lot more of my time, really more than I expected. Um, but through the process, I've, I've learned a lot. And I've had a lot of fun doing it. And as I tell friends about it, you know, they, uh, they seem to be interested in what I have to say about what I've learned about beekeeping. And a lot of expressed interest in, in the process. Uh, yet, I found that not very many people are all that enthused about throwing on a suit and digging into a beehive. So that's where this comes in handy, is that I think this is a way for um, the average person to kind of jump in and see what beekeeping is all about uh, without having to suit up and without worrying about getting stung. You can view it from the comfort of your own home. So that, that's what this is. This is uh, an entertainment uh, kind of informative sort of thing as, as far as you know, exposing people to what beekeeping is all about. Um, but as I said, I'm, I'm an amateur at this, so you have to take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, there's a lot of research to be done. There's a lot of different trains of thought. Uh, on a lot of these uh, processes and procedures, and, and I'm very much still learning the process. So um, that said, let's uh, dive right in. This first episode is basically a diagram of a basic hive inspection. Um, you can see I've, uh, I'm well into the hive already. Uh, I removed the uh, top cover and the inner cover. Uh, those um, help regulate the airflow, and now I'm uh, pulling the frames apart. This beehive is what's known as a Langstroth. Uh, it's, uh, these beehives are typically named after their inventors. Uh, the Langstroth is a hive uh, known for the frames. Um, it has a frame all the way around the honeycomb. This is a 10 frame Langstroth, uh, which means there's 10 frames all the way across. Uh, they make various sizes of them. There's eight frames, there's five frames. Um, I, I like the 10 frame because it's the biggest and it, it provides uh, the mo most room for the, the bees uh, and I find it a little bit easier. I don't do a lot of lifting of them so size isn't a big deal for me. Um, so uh, with the inspection I am looking for a number of things. Uh, first and foremost I am checking the, uh, the development of the hive. I'm looking for how the hive is growing, uh, making sure that new bees are coming up, uh, making sure that the, um, the old bees are in good health. So uh, with the brood, the first thing I'm looking for is the queen. If I can spot the queen, then I know that she's in there and um, at least alive. Uh, but that's not enough. I need to make sure that she's not only there, but that she is producing new bees. And so to that extent, I am inspecting these cells for eggs, uh, larvae, and capped brood. Now, the eggs are really tiny. Uh, they're like a tiny grain of rice. Uh, they take, um, my, my eyes aren't, aren't half as sharp as I'd like them to be. Uh, and so sometimes it's difficult to spot them unless I'm right in direct sunlight. Um, so a lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll skip that part of it. I really try and look for them when I can, but sometimes you just can't spot them. So failing that, uh, I look for larvae. Larvae are what the eggs hatch into. Um, they're very small worms that they, they live exclusively in the cells. And the nurse bees come by and will deliver the, um, the nectar to them to feed them. Uh, they get bigger and bigger until they fill the entire bottom portion of the cell, at which point the nurse bees will cap off the cell and the bee will pupate. Um, now that the capping is uh, particular to the type of bee. You can see on this frame, it's a very smooth capping. Uh, that is um, actual worker brood. Those are all females, and those are the bees that I, I really want in the hive. They're the ones that, that do the work. Uh, there are, are also um, drone cells 
uh, which as we go through, you'll see they're, they're bumped up a little bit. They're like a little, little pimple. Um, those are slightly bigger and those are the males. Uh, the only thing the males do in the hive are, are um, consume the resources and fly out and try and mate with other queens. Uh, so uh, once it's capped, the uh, as I said, the uh, the bee will pupate uh, until it's finally fully grown and will chew its way out, uh, and then it enters the colony and gets to work. So uh, in addition to the brood, I am also looking for other signs of health. Uh, I am looking for mites. Uh, I am looking for uh, possible um, infections with fowl brood. Um, and I'm looking for uh, issues with scavengers such as mice or ants. Um, and, and really I'm just looking in a general sense the, the quality of the hive and how well they appear to be doing. Now you can see this hive is uh, actually doing fairly well. You can see a lot of bees on top. Um, indicates that they're, they're pretty strong. Um, and uh, you, need, you need a lot of bees to get a nice productive hive. I actually have sense um, what we'll see at the end of this, I, I put on a honey super and, and I'm able to start collecting honey at this point. Uh, and here uh, we have a um, brood frame pretty much filled all the way up, which is just great to see. A lot of these were kind of half and half. And on the other side, we have the queen. You can see her, she's got a dot on her back. Uh, she's a little bit longer than the other bees. And there she is right there. Uh, and she's the one that is uh, the, the focus of the hive. Now, the, the interesting thing about queens is that they're, they're not queens in the sense that you and I think about uh, queens as a human queen is. Uh, the queen is, isn't the sovereign. She's not in control of the hive. Uh, she just happens to be the one um, that, that lays the eggs and, and the hive kind of focuses around her. Uh, but just because she's the focus doesn't mean she's in charge. And in fact, if the if the queen uh, gets sick or weak or isn't producing as many eggs uh, or for pheromone levels drop, the, re the colony will oust her and they oust her by killing her uh, and then they'll grow a new queen um, to replace her uh, and then the cycle goes on. So she's, she's got a lot of pressure on her to, to survive. Uh, you also see here I've got a notepad that is uh, probably the other uh, second most important tool I've got here other than my bee suit that keeps me from getting stung. Uh, that's a way for me to keep track of what's going on in the hives and so I can uh, recall what's happening from week to week. So you see I, I kind of I stopped my inspection as soon as I found the queen. R really the, the goal of an inspection is to have an idea of what you're looking for, get in, and then get out as soon as you meet that goal. Uh, an inspection of the hive is, uh, it's, I won't say it's traumatic, but it's obviously not um, uh, the, uh, it's, it's an invasive procedure. And the hive usually takes a day or so to recover. So the less uh, impact you can have on the hive and the, the shorter you can make the inspection, the better. Now you see here, I am separating the top uh, section from the bottom. Uh, the sections are identical. It's just more space for them. Uh, and, and I'm checking the bottom only for uh, only only to make sure that um, they filled out that space because I don't want to add anything any other uh, space for them if their space is, is has more room to grow into uh, that can cause problems um, and, and also to make sure that they're not so crowded that they're creating queen cells and trying to swarm and so at this point I'm just working my way through the hive and uh, making those final checks and um, and then putting the honey super on.
at this point, the inspection is done. Uh, and now all that's left to do is add the honey super because there's no more space in the hive or rather there's some space, but the hive is if it's 80 to 90% full, you need to add more space for them to draw into. Otherwise they have a tendency to swarm. Now the honey super is nothing more than another box of beehives. Uh, although this is slightly shorter than the brood box. Um, six and a quarter versus uh, nine and five eighths. Uh, the purpose of this is so that you can actually lift it once it's full of honey. Honey weighs uh, a lot. And so when you have a, a box full of it, uh, you can break your back hauling it down. This box here will fit, um, I, I get about 30, 35 pounds of honey out of it if, once it's all full and capped. Um, and, uh, you know, the other trick of it is to um, uh, keep it so it's just honey in there. Uh, this At this stage in the season, I can put that on, though, and, and they'll put whatever they're going to have in there and, and uh, th there's really a low risk that um, the queen will put brood up there um, which obviously makes it difficult to harvest. Uh, now I'm putting the hive back together the last thing I do here is I scrape all of the uh, the bridge comb off of the screen. The screen I made myself uh, and it's a little bit too deep apparently. Um, the way it works is that if uh, the bees need a very particular amount of space if it's too small they won't go in there if it's too big, they'll build comb in it, and this is obviously too big. Uh, so screen cover goes on, outer cover goes on, and that is it with the inspection. Now, I use a strap to tie down. Uh, that's probably overkill. Rock is good enough, or really you don't need anything. The weight of it can hold it uh, pretty well. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed this. I, I hope you found it uh, entertaining, if not informative. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, take care.